I am Rusty Wallace. You're on the AT8 network and the next round starts now. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another exciting round of the iDrive series as we are about to start round 5 of 7 in the Fall League. We are broadcasting here on ATA Network, your home for the iDrive series. As we've seen throughout the year, the light class will once again be split up. And along with the split, we have a huge debut here in the iDrive series as Evan Stommer is going to take to the track tonight as he turned 16 earlier in the week and is now eligible to compete in the iDrive series. Unfortunately, it is too late for him to qualify for the iDrive championship event, but he will have his hands full on that day as he chases down another Margay Junior Championship on November 4th. Along with Evan Stommer, we will also have Rockwell Seacrest and the return of Gage Rucker. Stommer and Seacrest will race in the A block along with Brendan Lauer, Scott Faulkner, Eduardo Luque, Scott McClendon Jr., Micah Floretta, and Lawrence Dunlap. Rucker will be by himself as far as the Margay block is concerned, and he will be able to race with Austin Russell, Bobby Krug, Dylan Wilbers, Adam Ward, Patrick Schmookey, Ryan Josie, and Gary Faulkner. After four rounds of fierce competition, let's take a look at the current point standings, starting with your points leader, Brendan Lauer. Brendan Lauer currently has 870 points and is the current record holder for the most wins in a row in the iDrive series. He's hoping that does not stop tonight. Brendan Lauer has a 93 point lead over his teammate Bobby Krug, who maintains his second place spot in the points after a poor performance last week. Krug looks pretty happy right now as the track is hotter than we've normally dealt with the past few weeks and he's hoping it'll be an advantage for him tonight. Shooting to the third place spot after a second and first place finish last week is Austin Russell. Russell's stellar performance last week moved Micah down the ladder to fourth, and he is only four points behind Crew. Before the race today, he showed off a Subaru onesie, announcing baby Russell to come next year. We want to take a moment to obviously congratulate Austin and Hannah, and hopefully this newly announced father will find his way to the podium tonight. Five points behind him in fourth place is Micah Floretta who had a decent night finishing second and third last week after a hard-fought fight with Adam Ward and Jared Hester. Floretta is on the short end of the stick when it comes to splitting up the class, as he's not going to only have to battle with Brendan Lauer and Adam Ward tonight, but also two Margay competitors. He's hoping he can find the speed and finish well to stay in contention for the third place trophy. Before we head down to the track, I'm going to make my pick for the Fight the Fight driver to watch. And this week, I'm going to go with Adam Ward. And here's why. The guy walked into the iDrive series and has been able to run with the top guys from the start. He has a pretty good kart selection tonight, and Dylan Wilbers is back this week, so we might get to see a continuation of the round three conflict between the two. Adam Ward, your fight the fight, driver to watch for round five. 
And with all of that, let's head down to the track and see where your drivers stack up for the first heat for the A block. All right, starting us off here, ATA Network starting grid, got Evan Stommer and Rockwell Seacrest. A couple of Ignite drivers going to start us off here in heat 1A of the iDrive Series round 5. Row 2 has Scott Faulkner to the inside to the outside. Brendan Lauer, weird seeing him in that fourth place spot, usually in the front row there. Yeah, real weird seeing that. As we go down back to row three, I drive regulars, Micah Floretta and Scott McClendon Jr. both have wins. We'll see if they can make it up from that fifth and sixth starting spot. And bringing it up the rear in row four will be Lawrence Dunlap, Eduardo Luque. Yeah, a couple of unknowns here. Those two drivers starting on the front row. Haven't really seen them do any I drive racing. We don't know what their skill level will be, but seeing them on the front row like that, they're definitely going to be some sort of threat. And like you said, not a lot of iDrive experience, but they have definitely know their way around the track within the Margay carts, hopefully, hopefully getting an upset here tonight with the iDrive guys. All right, getting ready to kick it off. We're going for the flag. Let's see the flag. There it is, and Heat 1A of Round 5 of the Fall Series is underway. Rockwell gets a really good start there, but Evan Stommer stays alongside of him. Evan finally get his cart going up to speed. They're still side by side going into turn two. Keeping things real close here through three. Moving on the inside, that Scott Falkner, I think, moves into second. Not a bad move. As we ride on board here with Brendan Lauer still in that fourth place spot, contending Micah Floretta seeing pointing. They need to get themselves moving up. He, I, he really wants to get the win here tonight, keep the streak alive. And he'd also like to see his teammate, Micah Floretta, do pretty well, too. Yeah, that was tough side-by-side -side through there. Lauer down to fifth. You see him coming by to take lap two. And things starting to spread out here, side-by-side -side for fourth. Couldn't get it done. Brendan moves behind Micah Floretta, but he's not going to give up on him. Micah and them, pretty good friends. They were on the team together during the Gateway 500 event back in May. So they're going to race each other clean, but Brendan, if he's if he's got a chance to go, he's going to go. He doesn't want the Margay guys to take off with the win. Yeah, I really don't think there's a lot of urgency behind Brendan tonight. I know there's some people he really wants to prove himself to, but he's already got so many wins at this point. He's not in a do-or-die situation. He might take it real easy here. Very true, and alongside with that, you got Rockwell and Evan Stommer who are coming in late to the series, so they're even too late to where they can't contend for the iDrive Championship, so Brendan's got his sights set probably further out, not necessarily to the end of this season, but to the championship event and the Margate cart. Still so impressed though, Scott Falkner. We haven't seen too much from him so far in the iDrive series. But look at him up here in second place and a pretty healthy margin over Seacrest. It looks like he might even be able to challenge Stommer for the lead. We give him enough time. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, we usually see Scott Faulkner and his brother Gary not, you know, very top performers in the iDrive series. But to see him in second in between two Margate competitors, really great drivers here at the Cartplex, that's, that's pretty good on his resume. Hopefully he can pull off a solid win and keep that podium finish. Of course, Gary and Scott not racing together tonight. They'll see Gary later on in the B class. As Micah and Lauer are still very, very, very close. Brendan Lauer is going to take a look to the inside there. If he can maintain that spot going to turn three, that will be the dominant line. And he will keep it. That's going to move Micah back a spot. And Scott uh, Scott McLennan Jr., excuse me, is going to be right there on Micah too as Evan Stommer is just pulling off a lead. But like you keep saying, Scott Faulkner right there in contention. If Evan makes a small mistake, he will be able to capitalize. See Rockwell back in no man's land in third. Having a hard time catching top two, but he is definitely checking out from the rest of the field probably because of that Floretta Lauer battle. Now Lauer going to see if he can catch up, but that's that's quite the gap. There's not these aren't very long races. The clock is definitely ticking there for Brendan Lauer, and like we've mentioned the past few weeks, that streak not looking very healthy. Like it's going to be able to stay alive tonight, but 
you can't complain with a fourth place finish. It's way better than finishing far in the back. And he's already got so many wins underneath his belt. Pretty good uh, gap with the points lead. So as long as he can have a healthy finish and keep it clean, he should have a great night. Yeah, in a series where only your best 10 races count, having seven wins pretty much gives you a lock for the championship. Of course, anything can happen, but it's going to take a massive effort from the rest of the field to dethrone Lauer this year. And while we're on the Lauer thing, let's once again take a look at Lauer's resume. Coming from pole position, walking over here to the Gateway Carplex, and he's had podium finishes in every league he's done, including a second place in the Gateway 500, second place at the beginning of the year. He's really thirsty for that first place trophy. He's been given too many second place trophies, and this time he round, he's, he's shown that he's here to play, play really hard, and he really wants to be able to work with the Margay group next year and be able to prove himself in the real leagues. Well, numbers, de uh, they definitely do tell a story, but I think another thing that tells a good story is if you can come out and just see some of these guys race, maybe they don't have the numbers in a certain series that you might think are really impressive as far as someone like Evan Stommer since he's never even been in the iDrive series. But we've, we've seen him doing some racing on the Arrive and Drive nights, just coming out on his own, and he is one of the smoothest racers we've ever seen. It's really no surprise to see him pulling out to such a massive lead like this. I, I do believe he has actually started to pull away now from Scott. He's got this race pretty much sealed up. So if he continues to race round six, round seven, look for him to potentially just keep sweeping. He can start it tonight, keep it going to round six, keep it around, going around seven. And like you say, he's actually not new to the rental carts. You just have the age gap to where you can't do the iDrive series until you turn 16. And Evan Stommer, Gage Rucker, Spike Kohlbecker, they all switch and swap that record time that's set. And all these drivers like Brendan Lauer, Bobby Crude, Michael Ferretta, Scott McClendon, they're all trying to chase that and be able to beat a time set by one of these private kart racers. But you just see those three just dominate the charts every week here at the Gateway Kartplex. And uh, the most recent record, you know, change was when Spike was out here during the IndyCar night when you could uh, win the chance to go into victory lane. And pretty sure Spike was the one to be able to maintain that, that lap time. Couldn't tell you what it is, but we're getting really, really, really close to breaking into 36. Oh, yeah, those Ignite guys are really something else. And just to update our fans on that fifth place battle, it looks like Every, t every time we look back there, they're real, real close. It's about three, car uh, three carts under a blanket, but that is still Micah Floretta holding that fifth place spot. Uh, he's not shaking Scott McClendon, uh, Scott McClendon Jr., though. They're still pretty close last time I saw. He might have a shot at it by the end of the race. That's pretty much the only battle on track, or at least the highest battle up on the leaderboard so far is for that fifth place spot. We had to be getting really close to the end of this race. Engage Evan, Evan Stommer. <laughs> Evan Stommer is really just pulling away here from the rest of the pack. If you look at those gaps that you have between the first and fourth place, it just it keeps getting bigger and bigger as you go back. So he's got this one locked down in the bag if he doesn't make a mistake, which I personally don't think he will. I really do understand how you almost called Evan Gage. I, I, I mean, Keith Sharp. Uh, general manager at the Carplex even made the same mistake I overheard while he was announcing. He he accidentally ended up calling Evan Gage going to the white flag here. Oh look, we lost track of time. Look at that. <laughs> going so fast around here, it's our last lap. So oh, Evan Stommer, battle. once again, he's got the lead right now and he's going to probably take his first checkered flag and his first start here in the iDrive series. Not much Brendan Lauer can do. He's going to finish directly right off the podium. Looks like Scott Faulkner will be able to maintain second place along with Rockwell Seacrest getting that third. It's getting really close for that fifth place spot. We don't have a camera on it right now. The last time I saw, they're still right there. there you see Evan Stommer takes his first one of the iDrive series. Scott Faulkner, Rockwell Seacrest, that's your top three. As we come to see the race for fifth, Scott McClendon Jr. takes the top five. Nice run. As we take a look there, 
Behind Scott was Lawrence Dunlap. Micah Floretta pushed back to seventh place. Ooh. And Eduardo Luque rounds out this first race of the night. Tough race for Micah. He'll be happy to drop it. And now the B block is finished qualifying, and they're going to take the grid here. Let's take a look at the starting grid presented by ATA Network. Getting the pull tonight. Don't know how, don't know where he came from, but Ryan Josie is going to have the pull tonight. Alongside him is going to be Bobby Krug. Ryan Josie almost breaking the 37 second bracket. Real nice to see him up in that pole position. Then we got Austin Russell, Dylan Wilbers. They'll take. Third and fourth out of qualifying, 38-1 and 38-3. Row three is going to have Adam Ward and Gage Rucker. Gage Rucker, one-third of the Margay people that are going to be racing with us tonight. Should be interested to see what he can do. Yeah, sure. He will be up there, up to the front real quick. Then we got Patrick Schmookie, Gary Falter. That'll be your round, your row four, more so. We're about to get 1B going here. Drivers getting ready to take the green flag here. Let's see it. Let's see the flag. Let's see the flag. Come on, give us the flag. Oh, you're not so sure? Not so sure? You're not so sure you're going to give the flag? And there it is. There it is. Uh, green flag, go, go, Whoa, go. Whoa, Gage Rucker taking it three wide in a turn one, going outside of Adam Ward. And what was Dylan Wilbers, Ryan Josie still got the first place spot from Bobby Krug. Real interested to see how long Josie can keep that top spot. He's been on the podium a couple times before, but we, he has yet to win the iDrive series. Bobby going underneath, and he'll try to take him pretty easy down here. So does Austin Russell, ducking down low pretty quick, and now Austin Russell's going to be nibbling on the rear end of Bobby Krug, as Bobby Krug's going to lead the first lap here in the B-class heat one. Ooh, big oh. bump, big bump. Austin Russell gave Bobby a big bump there. Gage Rucker moves up to the top spot there. Should be getting an instant replay from something like that. That was crazy. Yeah, Bobby goes out of the lead with contact from Russell. I'm sure that'll be a very angry text later on tonight. We take a look at the instant replay. Yeah, a little bit out of the line. Yeah, sometimes that's all it takes. And Gage Rucker to the lead. We see it from Austin's point of view. I can't tell if he got help from behind, but Gage was definitely right there. But how about that? Six to first after the first lap. Taking a look back here from all the way by Adam Ward. You can see how much he gained on Austin and Bobby. I was surprised if Gage was bumping Austin, how he was able to get around both of them that quick. Because with Austin on the rear end of Bobby, it slowed both of them down like that. So... Now Bobby's got to try fighting back for that first place spot. Probably one of the toughest competitors in the block, and that's Gage Rucker. He already showed dominance. We'll see what he does. Bobby, of course, hungry for a win. It's been a long time. I think it was round one. Uh, his second race, round one, was the first... Uh, I, I actually can't remember which one it was. It was round one when it happened. That was the last time he won. Yeah, it was round one, heat one, with his teammate getting the win in the second heat, and that's when his streak would start. Heating up here in turn three, but couldn't get it done. He'll get a shot down here. Coming down the back stretch, will he pull down? Here it comes. Side by side, giving him a little bump, knowing, telling him that he's here, and he's going to get it done. He's going to get past Gage Rucker, but that's just for the moment here, as they're about to cross the start-finish line here once again. Still a lot of laps left for Gage Rucker to get by Bobby as he is right there on the back of his bumper. Tried to make a move on the inside. Did not have the speed to make it work, though. Trying to get next to him, but you got to have the preferred line or else it's just not going to work out. You see Austin Russell, Ryan Josie battling for third place. Just trying to keep up with these guys. They might want to try to run single file just to catch up. Almost night and day compared to the A block and the B block as Austin Russell is going to duck down to the inside of Ryan Josie. He's going to make it stick and make the pass for third. Yeah, the A block, we were kind of seeing single file through first place all the way back to fourth. 
And now we have first and second and third and fourth battling for position. So, so far, pretty good race. Yeah, Block P putting on a really good show. It's going to take a look inside. Turn two. They're side by side to three. This is always an exciting part of the track. Trying to play with that momentum. Bobby holds on for now, but Gage just eating that rear bumper for breakfast. And he's going to duck down to his inside here as they're going to go through the North Pole turns. Let's see what happens. Krug's not going to let him go easily. But he's also going to... screw up. He's going to duck down behind him. I think he learned his lesson last week with the barrier situation. And he's not going to try passing him again, so he's going to duck behind and see what he's got to do here to get past Gage Rucker once again. Trading back and forth there. And that action that they've been doing back and forth has allowed... Austin Russell and Ryan Josie to gain up a little bit on them. Bobby Krug looking at outside and knows that's not the preferred line as they're going to head down the backstretch here once again. Looking like a 1-2-3 battle here. Who's that back in third place? Looking like Austin Russell's up there. That would be Austin Russell. Oh, damn, here we go. Three-way battle for first. Let's see if they all survive the dangerous North Pole turn. And we all look pretty safe. Gage Rucker looking for a win here in the iDrive series. I don't think he's won this season. I think he might have picked up a win last season. Maybe not. Oh, no, he hasn't won yet. He he has made some very valiant efforts, but there's always been at least one person able to one-up him, and it must have been very frustrating because he has seen plenty of, uh, plenty of success in the Ignite series. He's also had a decent amount of podium finishes here too. Probably a lot of runner-ups and third places, but... Bobby Cruz going to look to the inside of him. Late pull out there by him. It looks like Gage is going to get safely behind him as they go through that last turn of the North Pole turns. Krug going to lead him again to the line. Should be interesting as these laps are going to just keep ticking down and down and down when the white flag comes out. Who's going to try making the move and what's going to happen? Yeah, those top four. I use the term under a blanket a lot, but god damn, if they weren't all under the blanket, I wouldn't have to keep saying it. Look at this. Austin Russell just giving Gage a couple bumps to the rear end there. He's going to try battling him for second place, and that's what Bobby Krug would want to see. I've said this before, but that's what you would want to see leading the race, the two guys behind you battling for position. I go back to my first win in the iDrive series, and when you look behind you and you see two guys side by side and you're about to take to a checkered flag, that's the best thing you can see because you know they're going to take momentum off of each other and that's just going to give you a wide open door to the victory lane. Yeah, that was a real good job of not breaking the fourth wall there. He got pretty close, but I think you saved it at the last second. If you uh, catch my drift. Speaking of drift, cold track tonight, so we're going to see a lot of that going on. Yeah, there's a big debate going on as to whether drifting, letting the car slide out, if that is actually faster than trying to control it, keeping the momentum going. It really just comes down to the track conditions. Sometimes it's just more favorable. Adam Ward looks like he's struggling back there in the fifth place spot as Ryan Josie and Austin Russell kind of just starting to pull away from all of them. Ryan Josie. Ooh, here we go. Ryan Josie to the inside Austin Russell. He's going to contend for third place there. Austin's going to be generous there and let him have that inside line. But Ryan, not there anymore as we see the gap between first, second, and third increase compared to when they were under the blanket. Yeah, they're not in bed anymore. You see Bobby and Gage easily pulling away. I just don't know. I just don't know if it's enough to say that either anyone has it in the bag. But we are on the white flag lap, so hey, maybe he does have it in the bag. We've seen him make a lot of mistakes here the past couple weeks, though, so I wouldn't count Gage Rucker out of the battle. It's bad wheel hop almost looking like there in turn two by Krug, but if he can just keep that gap, Bobby Krug's going to win again for the second time this season. Leading them down the back stretch one more time. He's just got to do a couple more smooth turns, gets it locked up. I think that'll do it. I think that'll do it. Gage doesn't have a run on him, and it looks like checkered flag's going to be out for Bobby Crew. Gage Rucker's going to finish in second. Austin Russell third. Ryan Josie fourth. And we'll take a look at the rest of the finishing order here as you see the two touch knuckles. There's a lot of respect between the two after that battle. Great to see Bobby back in victory lane and a good showing for Josie, not on the podium, but to grab the pole position and keep up with those top three drivers all race. That'll make him a memorable name 
eventually. Eventually it will happen. Eventually. that one. Heads. Heads, heads. We have proof. We are heads up tonight again. Good start in the order you do. Already halfway through a very exciting round five. Well, it was partially exciting. Saw the group A spread out a little bit. Dominance from Evan Stommer, his first time in the iDrive series. Group B real close together. We'll see how group 2A will pull off their second race tonight. Starting grid brought to you by ATA Network, Evan Stommer, Scott Falcon, your front two from the first race. Average times real close to the 37 second bracket. And the road two, we'll have Rockwell Seacrest on the inside, Brennan Lowry on the outside. Both guys looking to get the win here tonight. Both really thirsty for it. Well, I think everyone's looking for a win if I just want to be frank. Oh, by the way, Scott McClendon Jr. and Lawrence Dunlap, that's your row three. Both nice guys. And starting in the rear, we'll have Micah Floretta and Eduardo Luque. Tough break for Micah Floretta as he's trying to chase down the third place spot. That's going to hurt his points, but hopefully he can make up the ground here tonight. Anticipation is high, and there's a green flag. Evan Stommer gets a really good jump there, but Faulkner's not going to let him go easily. Looks like the top five's just going to fall right back in line there, as in there was their finishing order. A little accordion effect there for that battle for third in turn two. Got him bunched up, and that'll let the front two get away, but now they're side by side going down the back. Scott Faulkner had the advantage there going into turn three, but the weight of Evan Stommer barely making it in with his weight. He's going to get a little bit of an advantage there over Scott, and they're going to once again go single file through the North Pole turn. It's going to keep it safe and relatively clean as they're going to put lap one in the books here. I think I just saw Lauer pointing to his cart as he went by. I don't think he's very happy with it. That's the same cart Micah Floretta had last race, and as we know, Micah, a very uncharacteristic seventh place finish so uh, Lauer might be in trouble here and if we take a look here at that battle for second place we got four drivers kind of freight trained as that's going to be a good thing for Evan Stommer as he's going to look to sweep the night here and I'd say with his uh, record and his statistics here he's probably got a good chance of getting it done Going by to start lap three, they coming through the last turn. Still got Scott Falconer in second. Great to see him continue a great night, but he might not hold on for very long. Seacrest right on him through two. And bringing the rest of the competition with them. They're starting to stack up here. Yeah, it should be interesting to see what's going to happen. You got, you know, Scott Faulkner and Rockwell Seacrest, but behind those two, two very, I'd, I'd call them almost veterans to the iDrive series for how many great accomplishments these both drivers have had. Uh, Scott McClendon Jr., Brendan Lauer, they're looking to take advantage if those two can get together. And you see Rockwell trying to signal Lauer to get to his rear end and give him some bumps so they can work past him. Not sure if Brendan's going to work with him or not. Should be interesting to see what can happen if Brendan can get to the back bumper of Rockwell Seacrest. 
it's all about whether he determines their threat. Oh, look at this! Two and one! A pass through turn three! Look at that! Brent's just kind of in second place now, isn't he? Well, that <laughs> I, I've never seen such a smooth pass done. He didn't, he didn't have to use eight wheels to get the pass done. He used his own four and made that line stick as both were just up high and he just took advantage of it and I, I, I Lauer impresses me but that that was something out of his realm out of nothing I would have expected there but look at look at behind him oh there's so oh so much beating so much banging oh. Scott on the rumble strips a bit that's a little trouble He's falling back to fifth. And all this battling has got Evan Stommer a huge lead over the rest of the drivers. Is looks like Scott McClendon Jr. and Faulkner. Faulkner's already got himself pushed back to fifth after that incident. But it looks like Brendan Lauer is going to try keeping that second place spot locked down. But Rockwell's not going to let him take away. Looks like that is the battle shaping up right now. That's a big one on the track for P2. Looking inside on turn two, but can't quite get down there. Brennan gives him the room, gives him the room anyway, but he cannot put the cart in there. Yeah, the and they'll take it down the back stretch. One, two, three. And the smart driver would give the driver the inside line going into turn two, because then that would give you the inside for turn three. As Rockwell's going to dive to the inside, it looks like Brennan's going to give it to him. He got a little squirrely. Ooh, heavy contact nudge, between nudge. the two. Hit, hit. And everyone is right back there. That's the problem with trying to make passes in the North Pole turn. If it works out, you're golden. But if it doesn't work out, you just gave a lot of advantage to the people that have been trying to catch you the last few laps. Brendan Lauer, he's either night or day. He's either going to be a cool, calm, collected driver, or he will rage his ears off. And after the streak being ended, I'm not sure which he is, but both scenarios would be great for him in the second place spot because he's going to keep a defensive line. He doesn't want Rockwell getting by him after finishing back there in the fourth place spot. He's going to want to finish on the podium tonight just to make sure. I, I know we've, see, we've seen where he's gotten seven wins and he's got a pretty decent chance, pretty actually really good shot at getting the trophy at the end of the year, but he's he's wanting those really good finishes. So Rockwell once again to get in the inside, but like I was saying earlier, you watch here, he can get to there but Brendan's got the advantage going into turn three, and turn three is the one of the most important turns because that's where your momentum is going to get carried through for the backstretch. Rockwell on the back bumper. Brendan's going to take him down, make him pass way low below the white line there for the backstretch. You don't see that very often. Brendan's usually really good at getting an exit off of turn three, but he was right on his bumper all the way down the backstretch. Now looking inside on the side last by turn. Side they're going to the start finish line. Rockwell still looks like he had a little bit of advantage there. Mm. Great move by Rockwell Seacrest. Went over the strip, and that's going to give Rockwell second place, and it's a five cart battle. Look at him go. Looks like that's Ryan Josie behind Scott McClendon Jr. battling there for. Ryan Josie is not in this race. He is not in this race. That is definitely Michael Floretta. I get confused all the time. Well, I mean, they're both two handsome men here in the iDrive series. They're right both on. wearing helmets right now. Right. Well, one of them isn't because he's not racing. Anyway, back to the battle for a second, trying to get that inside line, carry some good inter speed, but not good exit speed. Gets a real good run through turn two right up to him. It's like he catches him in the wrong places. He'll get to him in the center of a turn, but when it's time to get up and go, Rockwell is just out of there. Giving him subtle bumps there through the turns, knocking on his door saying, hey, I'm here, just so that way you know he'll know when he's going to be making his move. But he gets the gap down the back stretch, but it looks like Brennan's going to be a little bit stronger through the North Pole turns. He's going to lose some speed out of exit, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a close battle here. Should be interesting. Yeah. You can tell he was trying to get the exit speed, but just wouldn't carry. Ooh, it looks Ooh. like we got a driver off. We're getting reports here confirm from who that is. Reports from race control. Lawrence Dunlap, flat tire. Definitely an oddity. You do not see that very often. Tough break for him, but the battle rages on. You see him in the foreground. He doesn't get to race, but these two do. Thinking about it, but won't make that move on the inside. Going to the North Pole turn. See if it pays off. For a second, I thought and we were going to have lap traffic, but that was just the gap that Evan Stommer has. Had me confused, but 
Even though I say it looked like lap traffic, I thought what we were gaining is we have the white flag here. Evan Stommer's pretty much got this one locked down. Clear sailing for Stommer, but it is a three cart battle for second place. Seacrest, Lauer, Scott Falkner still showing speed as we head toward the final North Pole turn for the A group tonight. Brendan Lauer looks like he doesn't have the speed down the back stretch. Evan Stommer's got this one locked down as we're going to see him cross the line. Sweeps the night here in the A block. But let's see what's going to happen here with this battle. Brendan Lauer not able to get it done. Rockwell Seacrest going to get second place. Brendan Lauer finishes off the podium. Faulkner was there to battle both of them. Micah Floretta, Scott McClendon Jr. And in last place, Eduardo Luque. And then also Lawrence Dunlap, if you'd be so kind to remember him. Well, he didn't finish, so he didn't cross the line. That's very rude of you. Well, we got two podium finishes for Stommer and Seacrest. That's a great way to start out in the iDrive series, if you ask me. Well, I didn't ask you. We're divorcing. We saw a little bit more of an interesting fight there from the A block with their second heat. Pretty good night for Mr. Evan Stommer, first time in the iDrive series, picking up the sweep. Can Bobby Krug follow in his footsteps after battling back from this adversity that he's had? Let's take a look at the starting grid presented by ATA Network. And like we said, with the pole position, it's going to be Bobby Krug. But outside of him, going to give him a run for his money once again here. In the second heat, Gage Rucker. Two of the more dangerous drivers in the field. Pretty much any night, we got row two filled with Austin Russell, Ryan Josie. Josie's a surprise pole sitter from the last race. Yeah, and row three will have Dylan Wilbers and Adam Ward, two drivers that have had confrontation in the past. Let's see how they behave with each other in this race. And rounding out the top, the last two starting spots are Patrick Schmookey and Gary Faulkner. Keith's going to walk in front of the grid here and get his photo. And then he'll give the thumbs up over to the flag stand. And we'll take the green flag here for the last race tonight. I'd say pull those belts tight, but hey, we don't wear belts in the iDrive series. You know, people ask us why we don't wear belts. Uh, I think it's because we're pretty great. Green flag waves and Bobby's throwing his hands up. He might have thought that Gage got a jump on the start, which he's got a pretty good gap on him. I, I wouldn't put it past, but he's, this is very early in the race. It's not going to make that big of a difference. Well, you know what they say, suck it up, buttercup. And we'll look at this battle. Looks like Adam Ward trying to get by Ryan Josie on the opening lap, but hard to take advantage when there's no room for your card, I guess. Yeah, you're still very early in the race here. This is lap one, so you have to work them throughout the race and work up slowly, climb the ladder. As we see, big gap already formed between the top two runners in third place as Austin Russell is sitting there in third place. Bobby Krug's gonna try catching up there to gauge Rucker. Well, that is a disgusting gap. That is massive. I don't know if something happened to Austin that we missed and bottled the rest of the field up, but these two were just shot out of a cannon into the sun. They are gone. But if you remember back to the last race that we had with these drivers, Bobby Crew, Gage Brucker, they battled a lot, and that allowed the rest of the field to catch back up to them. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that we will see everybody else join back up with them again. It looks a lot more linear this time around. They're trying to get that gap before they decide who is the ultimate driver which I'm sure that is what we are here to discuss tonight, is who is the ultimate driver? Adam Ward giving a shot to the back of Faulkner there. They're pretty far back in the pack for it to be this aggressive, but every place does count in the iDrive series as the top 10 from this league, along with the top 10 from the final league, or the spring league, my apologies, will get the chance to battle out for the championship event where one of these guys will be able to walk with a Margate cart. You see Faulkner point him by. Doesn't like getting roughed up in the iDrive series, so he's going to let the faster guys go. Smart move by him. Gage Rucker still leading this race here. 
Bobby Krug still right there behind him, waiting for him to make a mistake, trying to find a line, trying to find his speed. And let's let's also note Bobby Krug, very good cart selection tonight, with cart 16 and cart 20. So it should be interesting. Gage Rucker in cart 16 though, so they're a little bit more even this time around. Yeah, keeping an eye on some battles further back. It's always, that's one of the things that's so great about the iDrive series. There's pretty much never a dull moment. As we see battle for the lead, there's battles all over the place. Yet again, another exciting race here from the B group. Yeah, just, it's wait and see here for Bobby Crew. Kind of playing cat and mouse here. Just going to try catching up to him. Maybe going to be a little conservative. Not really try to pass him because he saw where they were going back and forth. Probably Bobby thinking... Hey, let's you know, let's not battle. Let's let's try to pull away from the pack, and then we can battle later on once we have a huge gap. So we we kind of save each other, and we'll both finish in the top two instead of some third place guy pulling at last minute. And I lied because Bobby Krug's going to shoot to the inside. He's saying, "Screw it, let's get this over with now." He's going to get a clean pass. Gage Rucker's going to move behind him as they're out of the North Pole turns. Bobby Krug, your new leader. Well, you know what they say: if you can't beat him, it's because you're behind him. And right now, Gage is right behind him. That doesn't really have anything to do with the saying, but look at this, Bobby Krug back to the lead. They're going to be, I think they'll be trading it a couple more times before the race is over. Trade it back, back and forth a little bit more. I wouldn't doubt it. Both drivers know how to handle the carts, and you have a little bit more speed when you're behind. If we take a look at lap times there, generally it's P2 that's going to have the faster times compared to P1 when they're racing like this, as, 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 far, as long as it's a clean lap, obviously, and they're not battling back and forth. As we see once again, Gage Rucker, Krug last lap, King Me. Gage Rucker is going to say, hey, no, King Me. Bobby Krug doing a little taunt there saying, hey, I see you. So it should, should be interesting here. Well, you know, that's just what happens when you're a scrub lord. You go too high in that North Pole turn, you give him the inside line, and it's really all his fault. Yeah, let's give Bobby credit, though. He didn't hit the barrier like last week. Really reaching to compliment him here. We see a battle. Looks like Scott McClendon Jr. holding back. Russell and Dylan Wilbers, it looks like. That is Adam that is Ward third, there fourth, fifth. in that spot. Scott McClendon Jr. is Which not way? in this race. I see what you did there. Well, maybe they shouldn't wear the same helmet. Once again, coming to the line here, still a little gap between Bobby and Gage because we're going to see Austin Russell going to be trying to catch up to Scott McClendon. I mean Adam Ward because I'm not an idiot and I know who's in this race as he's going to look to his outside going into turn two, but knows that, oh, and he's going to get caught up there, it looks like. We're going to have a battle here between those two as Bobby Krug, as we see, we got two screens going here, two amazing battles. Bobby Krug looking for the lead again. Wow. Boy, how about this? How about I commentate the big one, I, you commentate the little one. It's already over. <laughs> we'll probably see that back again as we got a lot of battles going on track here. Bobby Krug, Gage Rucker pushing him as they go through the 90 turn as they're going going to take turn two gauge getting a pretty good run but he's on the wrong line there for that as he's going to get a little wobbly let's go back to brendan as he's going to commentate the battle for third all right i'll commentate third as we see not scott mcclendon jr keeping third place against who is dylan ward and who definitely is austin russell pulling him down the back stretch looks like they're pull away from austin he's trying trying to hunker down get an arrow advantage and he'll get a really good entry there he really carries the speed through the first half of the turn really well and keeps it going he'll right on their bumper coming to that last turn and we'll see if he can give him something before this is over although austin russell is the last driver in that chain that's the best spot you can be in because when those two drivers start battling each other kind of like where we saw brendan lauer make that move to the inside of rockwell C Ooh. stan faulkner He's going to be able to take the advantage, as we saw the shot given there by Austin Russell. You're getting a little impatient here. Now we are winding down to the last parts of the race. They don't know when the white flag is going to come. We don't get cross flags. We don't get, you know, when we get down to single digits, we don't know when it's going to happen. So they just kind of kind of estimate as Gage Rucker to the inside in turn one of Brendan, of Bobby Krug. And this, this race is just a cluster right now. Well, it's kind of odd that you see yourself getting past and you automatically almost put my name in there, but still a very good battle. They really probably were expecting to see the white flag come out that time. That's the 
kind of effect it has whenever you're real close to someone for so long. You just want it to be over. You're waiting to see that white flag so you can finally just kill the suspense once and for all, but we're going to have to wait a little bit longer, and it looks like Austin could have a hard time catching back up to that fourth place Wilbers. As the white flag is going to wave on our leaders, Bobby Krug, the current leader here, as once again we'll be in a two-screen situation as if we'll see Bobby will he be able to hold Gage Rucker back and can Austin Russell catch back up for the third place spot? Bobby going for the sweep tonight. His teammate in Lauer Krug, Brendan Lauer, he did three straight clean sweeps. Bobby trying to start his first sweep, he, see if he can get Side it. by side in the North Pole turns. They're still side by side. Krug not getting in the barrier. They're still side by side, still side by side. Who it's gonna happen? Body slamming. Oh. Who's got it? That was Bobby Krug by just a little bit there. Jesus Whoa. Christ, people. Listen, I know you like to race and everything, but you're going to get so hurt. Oh, yeah, give me a thumbs up like everything's cool. Adam Ward got that third place spot. Dylan Wilbers, Austin Russell, that the same uh, order that we saw them in before the finish here. Ryan Josie, Patrick Schmookey, Gary Faulkner round out the last race of the night. Yeah, last three going to leave a little disappointed, but hey, that's just the nature of iDrive. All right, standing here with Austin Russell, third and fifth tonight. A bit of bad luck on the cart draw. Uh, tell us how much that affected your race. Man, second race was tough. Uh, Really, I can't complain. First bad card draw this fall season, so you're gonna get them every now and then, you know. Just part of the I Drive series, the card draws, and uh, I got the nine car the second race, and everyone was struggling with it all night. I mean, every other race that ran, it just was the card struggling out there for speed, and uh, I can't really be disappointed in it. Still finished fifth, battled for third. I mean, it was right there, and then uh, just didn't have the straightaway speed. Uh, corner was fine, just. A little off in the straightaways and gave it all I got. But, uh, you know, fifth place, can't be bad, mad about that. That's Ty is my worst finish for the season so far. So, use that as drop race. And, uh, you know, we're hanging in there for second place in points, third place. And, uh, you know, we got a little gap on Micah tonight with him uh, struggling in both his races tonight. So, uh, give us a little cushion on him. Uh, so, we're, uh, we're in the money. And uh, as of right now, you know, we got four races left, two weeks. And, uh, as of right now, we're going to get a trophy, so uh, I'm happy with that, and uh, yes. All right, that's Austin Russell trying to be optimistic about the remaining two rounds of iDrive. Also, he's going to be a daddy, so that's really cool. That's really cool, Austin. You're really cool. Getting here with Brendan Lauer, fourth and third place finish tonight. The losing streak is over. Uh, what happened tonight, man? Uh, I mean, it was a good run while you had it. Uh, what well, seemed to be the issue tonight that uh, cost you that streak? I, I, well, first of all, I like that you call it a losing streak because it implies that everyone else was losing instead of oh, I'm winning. sorry, winning streak, my bad. No, I'm, that, that's actually pretty accurate. But, uh, I mean, I'm kind of relieved because part of it's like the suspense. When's it going to end? Why is it going to happen? And I'm, I'm glad it just came from I, I tried my best and it wasn't enough. And uh, it means I have room to grow. Uh, I got to race against Ep. Well, I was on the track at the same time as Evan. Didn't really race Evan. And I'll do, here's my quick five-second bitch fit about the cart. It sucked and it sounded like it was a cheese grater on the tires every time I went into the turn on both races. Okay. So that's that's all I'm going to say about that. But that's not what's important. What's important is I'm still going to be first in standings. Uh, the fourth place finish is going to be dropped without a doubt unless I completely shart the rest of the series, which I don't think that's going to happen. So uh, tonight was fine. I got I got podium out of what I thought was going to be absolutely terrible, and I'm not about to complain about it, except for all the complaining I did that already. All right, and I mean, so cool. Two weeks left to go, four races. I mean, you've won almost every single race this season. I mean, I mean, you walk into the next two weeks. Uh, I mean, championship, you know, not long after. We're about a little over a month away from the championship race. Um, you know, does the pressure build more going into that championship knowing that you've got a handful of wins this season? Uh, how, do, how do you get your mindset ready for these last couple races, uh, being only just about a month away from the championship race? 
So for the rest of the regular season, uh, there's, there's not much else aside from just make sure I don't finish awful because I've already filled up 10 of the scorable races, uh, 7 of them are already wins, and the last 3, as long as they're decent finishes, like I already got a 2nd and a 3rd, so then I have an extra slot at the end uh, that can put anything in it. Uh, there's really not much for me to worry about points wise. I have to, I have to pretty much just stop doing well right now. And I think we're, All right, I think we're about to do I'm some. I'm gonna show Brennan stuff. Lauer here as he's walking up to the podium. Uh, Brennan Lauer, your points leader, might even have the championship locked up now with two weeks remaining. Standing here with Bobby Krug, and finally he's got back into the first place position. He kind of did it twice there too. A little bit of a round five sweep. Tell me how you did it, Bobby. Uh, it wasn't easy. I battled through a lot of adversity the past couple of weeks, and to be able to do, make that happen, uh, it was it was very difficult. I had to battle with Gage Rucker in both races, and we kept it re pretty clean, relatively clean for the most part. We did a lot of bumping and rubbing, but that's expected in racing, and I've it, I have a lot of respect for him after tonight's uh, races, and just it was awesome, especially that last race, that finish. Apparently, it was really close. I haven't seen any footage or anything, but. Um, Obviously, if I would have got second, I would have been a little bit more upset about it. But we'll just ignore that. But just all over, all around, great night. Uh, qualified second, and then two wins, sweep of the night. Um, feel bad for Lauer, though. I mean, ends are inevitable. Um, so the fact that he wasn't able to, you know, keep that you know sweep going, I mean, that's that's disappointing. But still, a pretty decent night for him. I mean, he didn't crash out and finish last or anything like that. He still got the points lead, and he's still doing pretty good. So. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, thanks to everybody that watches these videos and everything. Thanks for all the support. And we got two more rounds left here and looking forward to get those under our belt and then looking forward to the championship. All right, that's Bobby Crew. Went from one win to three. That'll really help him into points coming up. We'll see if he can give Laura a run for his money as we head into round six next week. Standing by here with Scott McClendon Jr. Not one of your best nights. You qualified sixth and you got a fifth and a sixth. Uh, walk us through your night and what happened there. So, first round, qualified six. Um, the cart was a bit sluggish on the straightaway, so couldn't really do too much with the draft. And I was trying to hold my own behind Brendan and Micah. Brendan got by Micah, and I was trying to follow him, but uh, Micah was defending really well. I was trying to get by him as clean as possible without uh, you know, putting him into the wall. So that's just how I race, so that I'm not getting bumped into the wall by other people. So, um, yeah, I mean, I got past him, second turn, last lap. Uh, he went wide, and I pretty much dive bumped. But it was a little grinding, but it was definitely raceable. So, um, second race, it was definitely, it was a battle between third and everyone. So. I uh, kind of screwed myself because I let the door be opened up for my bed behind me. He was just waiting patiently. And uh, yeah, so he defended really nicely. Couldn't get by him on the last lap and uh, got sixth. So hopefully next week, or actually two weeks, um, we I do better. And I'll probably be doing a lot of more test sessions just to fill out the carts and test with the slower ones versus the fast ones. Yeah. Do you feel faster this week compared to last week? Because today was kind of an abnormal day. We've been in this you know, streak of having colder track, and today it was the hottest day of the week, hottest day we're probably going to see for the rest of the year. So we kind of yeah. went back to that old classic uh, like late spring almost. Yeah. You know, with the track, you feel a bit better with the track that we had this week, or do you think once we get back to the cooler temperatures you'll be winning again? Cooler temperatures is probably my best bet. Um, with the hotter temps, it eats up the tires a lot more. And during qualifying, you want to push, but you don't want to push too much. And I think during qualifying, I'm pushing probably too much. And I'm probably not as aggressive during the race because I'm trying to save for the tires toward the end. But yeah, during the cooler temps, I'm probably going to be up there and hopefully win another one. Hopefully do a sweep like Bobby Creek did today. Yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely cooler temperatures oh, on my side. So. Sucks. Scott McClendon Jr. looking for a lot more success here as we have two more rounds left here in the 2017 Fall High Drive Series. Standing by here with Adam Ward. Before we talk about your night tonight, you got to take a sweet look at this helmet here. 
Definitely have driver identity now. <laughs> Instead of having to use these Carplex helmets and Scott McClendon Jr. Oh, yeah. But anyways, let's talk about your night. Yep. Qualified fifth, finished sixth in the first race. And to, I don't know if this makes it all up, but you got a podium finish there in that second race. Uh, walk us through your night. And then also, this was the first night that we had your buddy back here at the track. Yep. Did you see any contact between you guys, or was it relatively clean? Uh, and what do you have thoughts going forward into the next uh, next two rounds? I got I got bumped a few times, but it was uh, it was it was good sport. Uh, I'd accept those. We're pretty competitive bumps. Nothing too serious like a couple weeks ago. We even you know had a great uh, battle for third place there in that second race. We bumped fists at the end, and everything's good now. But, um, had a rough night in qualifying, got stuck behind somebody who clearly didn't know how to really handle a cart. And uh, it's unpredictable, I couldn't figure out which way I needed to go to pass. Um, really bad lines, just twisting the cart back and forth before going through turns. I was getting frustrated. Finally get around them, put a best time I could grab, started fifth. Um, got a good jump on the, on the first race, went right into third. and. Uh, Two weeks ago, a guy bumps me. I drift way out into the barrier. Uh, light hit, car just couldn't handle it and already already taxing the tires enough. Um, so if I fall back to six, then that's, yeah, that's the best I could do. Okay. And uh, second race, got another good jump. I cut some people off and uh, caught up to third place from sixth, um, had a run down. Uh, there was no way I could catch second or first, and they were way ahead. Um, I think the best that cart had was a, fi a 35 and a 38 and a half seconds. I was gonna say 35, yeah. that'd be a new track record, but yeah. <laughs> that'd be a great track record. <laughs> and, um, yeah, 38 and a half, I got lucky. The guy behind me couldn't pass my defensive line and uh, held on to the third place with a guy that I had some bad blood with previously. Yeah, so overall good night for you, would you say? Yeah. Good night. I don't have to be so stressed out when I see that guy's face anymore. So that's good. <laughs> nice. So, bad blood's kind of cooled off now, and yep. almost got two uh, allies kind of going into the next rounds. We're good now. He even apologized. I thought that was very cool. So, and you can thank this broadcast for that, since we had contact with both of you guys and kind of said, you know, <laughs> what you guys each other thought. So, nice to see that that gap bridge together and two pretty good racers here in the iDrive series kind of getting over that. But. Yeah. He missed a week, otherwise he'd be he'd be uh, back up in the at least seventh place, maybe even a sixth if he wasn't uh, out that last week. Yeah. But good racing, having a good time again. All right, yeah, that's very good. Adam Ward still looking to get a win here with the last two rounds remaining, see if he can catch up any points on the rest of the field in front of him. 130 to go. Shiggy, <laughs> <laughs>